Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. In 2008, one of the most popular movies back then was The Dark Knight. And one of the most prolific sayings in that movie that went viral around that time was this particular quote. You will either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. When someone lives a great life and helps others, they tend to be considered a hero. However, as time passes, they can become corrupted for whatever reason. And soon they will live long enough to become the villain. This change is almost always certain, for most of our superheroes, unless they die early in their heroism or quit the business of being a superhero altogether. No matter what good intentions you have, absolute power eventually corrupts. As long as you live and continue, you must understand that if you're not careful, you can turn into the same thing that you are condemning, be it by accident or be it by intent. You can fall for the same corruption that you yourself have fought to eliminate. The day before Thanksgiving, we all saw this happen with the self-proclaimed ghetto superhero, Charleston White. Hello and welcome back to Lovely TTV. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Um, the day before Thanksgiving, Charleston White, who has called himself, you know, the ghetto superhero, um, you know, the hero of the hood, because he's going against rappers and people who rap about, you know, killing other rappers and things like that. Um, he did an interview with King Von's DJ, DJU. Um, initially, I thought the interview was in Chicago, but it's since come out that the interview took place in Fort Worth, Texas. And during that interview that DJU posted, um, Charleston White gets really upset, starts saying, F Mama Duck, F King Von, um, you know, F all these dead rappers. And then he jumps up and he pulls out a gun. This video is extremely disturbing, and I want you guys to check this out. Now that y'all got King Vaughn was a killer, my mama had two sons locked up for murder, and my mama let everybody know I'm not in agreement in what my son's done. I ain't but look. So this is what I'm saying. You can't make me curl by King Vaughn, mama. Vaughn, fuck Vaughn, that bitch. Look, I don't look, give a fuck look, about his mama. Y'all love look, his mama. I don't. You know Vaughn and Duck was like coming. I don't know that. What you don't know? I don't know that. I'm telling you. But I don't give a damn about it. I hey. help. I, listen, I help this mama. Why do I need to know about two dead ass niggas? I don't give a fuck about Duck or Vaughn. I help this living mama. Fuck them dead niggas. They preached about killing niggas. Give a fuck what they were. Why y'all not helping their mama? Why a nigga from Texas got to pay his mama car note? Why? And y'all want to tell me what I'm going to do with my money? Yeah, you want to do it because you want to do it. I didn't. No, no, no. She you asked, asked me. No, 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 no. She asked you. You a goddamn lie. How I know I, that I, bitch I, I need her car she, no pay? How the fuck I know she need her car no pay and she don't ask? You think I'm calling and asking do you need your car no pay? Right. Right. That's why I say I ain't going to say Come she, on, homie. She, so yeah. this is what I'm saying. Nigga, not one of my homeboy mama y'all will never have to help in Texas, nigga. Nigga, I'm tired of helping. So I can say fuck whoever mama nigga. And I kill a bitch behind me saying fuck they mama. I done helped them bitches. So somebody else helped them hoe. And I ain't fuck now bitch and could have fucked the bitch. So y'all go help the bitch. Since y'all got so much to say. <clears throat> bitch give me back the money then hoe. Fuck ass bitch. I ain't have to help now more you rotten ass hoe. Bitch. My mama ain't got a bunch of kids that die. Bitch, all you hoes buried your baby. Fuck y'all pain, bitch. Give me back my goddamn money, ho. Or suck my dick, bitch. In Chicago, fuck y'all. Suck my dick, bitch. I keep a goddamn gun for whatever. Hold on, hold on, hold on, nigga, I don't give a fuck about shit. Nigga, I keep a motherfucking gun. Nigga, I keep a motherfucking gun, nigga. Nigga, I keep a motherfucking gun, Chicago. Say, homie, you better, nigga, what you got going Man, you better sit down, homie. What you mean, what I'm on? Nigga, don't fuck with me with a gun in my hand, nigga. Too much, man. 
Y'all went too far. Y'all went too far, man. Y'all was doing good. Say, nigga, you better not fuck with me no more. You run all up on me, my Charles. Charles. Nigga, you a bad nigga better not say nothing to me when I grab my pistol, nigga. Tell me what I can't say. Nigga, fuck out, nigga. I'm praying. Watch out, man. Watch out, man. Don't do them this while they out here, bro. I ain't doing nothing like that. Nigga, better not walk up on me telling me about what I can't speak on, nigga. Bro, that man ain't tell you nothing, bro. Say, homie, I don't give a damn about nothing. He vibing with you, bro. He ain't vibing with me. So you guys just saw that video, and like I said, it went viral all over social media. Everybody had something to say about it. Um, Mama Duck did end up um, taking time out of her day, the day before Thanksgiving, which she should have been enjoying and remembering her sons to speak on the matter. So I want y'all to check this out as well. Hello, everybody. Once again, I'm coming to y'all with a public service announcement. I've been seeing this video of Mr. Charleston White pulling out guns on people and study disrespecting the mothers of Chicago, whom he has helped so much for some reason. I don't know why this man is study coming at us because now it's starting to look like real insane. Like, even now I'm saying I appreciate what you have done for me. I've given your flowers while you're here. Um, I paid you your connote money back in some. So basically you're saying you booked us. You wanted us to come out there and speak. Um, we had to pay you for that too. Remember the second time I came out there, Rainwater booked my flight just to listen to Duck's music. Mr. White, I don't know what's going on with you. Mr. White, I don't know what kind of problems you're going through. I don't know what's wrong with you where you keep coming for me i'm gonna speak for me and i'm also speak for tuka's mom and forget it every mom from that you're disrespecting i personally never did nothing to you you don't know everybody else i was the only one you talked to so my question is what is the real issue mr white what is the problem why are you studying doing this and then you're pulling guns on people like I don't get it Mr. White um, I just pray and I hope you seek some help and once again I'm giving you your flowers while you're here but it has to stop Mr. White at some point it has to stop you speak on this car note money that I have showed receipts like why did I send you $500? You sent me money for a condo. Explain to me, March 9th, why did I send you $500, Mr. White? I don't want no smoke with you, G. I'm going to tell you just like, just like that. All I'm going to do is pray for you because at this point, you have crashed out. 
without a freaking helmet, you have crashed out in Thanksgiving. It's the holidays. I'm missing my dead ass someone that she so much speaks so wrongly and like it's giving Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. All right, so you guys just saw that video. And then, of course, WAC 100, you know, who is forever an instigator, um, had things to say about the situation. He spoke on it, and he also confronted DJU. And this exchange was very, very interesting. So I want you guys to check this out as well. The homies, I said, them youngsters ain't seen that. They gonna go holler at them DJ niggas in Chicago. Whoever them niggas is, can let that happen. They gonna holler. I know that. Yeah, that he that, was that, um, he had did some shit up there with, with the mothers of Chicago. It was like Dirk. It was, I mean, not Dirk, but um, FBG Duck Mama. Oh, hey, bro, it don't matter what that nigga shit, did. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. tell you this right now. Them young young niggas ain't caught wind when they see this shit that I just saw. Oh yeah, they, they, they finna go out. holler at them niggas on that podcast. Oh, yeah, like, bro. This it, like this it. That said, when, when, you, when you got to talking about the respect, you know what I'm saying for folks' moms and all that. Shit, you see what I'm saying? Bro, bro, I talk to these people, bro. I talk to these people on the phone, bro. I'm really in Chicago, bro. You think I don't know what's going on in my city, bro? You crazy. You see what I'm saying? Like, so, you know, like, that, that's that's where it kind of get, you know, a little... So King Bob Mom gave you the green light no, 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 to no, no, put no, no, that no, no, out, no, 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 disrespecting no, 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 her and her son, bro. bro. bro we weren't even talking mm -hmm. about Bob Mom. We talking about... Yeah, you just about said about you talk to his people, bro. Bro, I talked to Vaughn people, yeah, but he wasn't talking about Vaughn, Mama. We talking about Mama Duck, and I talked to Mama Duck as well. No, I'm so talking, talking about King Vaughn, Mama, bro. Bro, he wasn't talking about Vaughn, Mama. He was talking what? about Mama Duck. He yeah, said, he you said you and every Vaughn, other dead nigga that died from Chicago. What you mean, that's bro? That's what made me say something to you. He said, fuck him and his mama, nigga. And his mama. Yeah, but he said like go the whole. Read your comments. You but, like that but listen, though, oh, listen everybody though. Everybody told you the same hey, thing. Hey, that low spoke hey, hey, kiddo, this what look. All he's saying is from the from the jump, the conversation started from him talking about duck mama. Yeah, man, fuck up. all that, bro. We talk, hey, bro. Though, so look, so hold on, so hold on. So the conversation started about me and you talking about. No, I ain't saying what he said was wrong, gang. I ain't saying what he said was right, gang. That's how the conversation started. what I mean about, bro. You niggas is different. I didn't say he was right, gang. I'm saying right. that's how the whole topic started, hey, gang. Nigga, he broke the deal for sure. How about letting him talk rather than speaking what you for saying? Him. What you mean, gang? Be, be cool. Hey, go ahead, homie, because you I'm telling still, me still you still talk to them people, bro. That's crazy. I, uh, bro, I talk, I talk, bro, that's what I'm saying. I talk to everybody, bro. Like, I'm really the number one platform in Chicago, bro. I talk to these people on a daily basis, bro. You feel me? Like, so... It ain't it ain't none of that like like cause y'all y'all got it going left field like I'm just out number here. Number one you know, platform in winning. Chicago allow Chicago to be disrespected. They need to switch that up. They need to boycott you the way the streets boycott. They need to switch that up, homie. You ain't it. That's a ain't fact. no way. What you gonna do next? Mm -hmm. Interview the nigga again and let him say Larry Hoover. What's mm -hmm. next? Nigga? Mm mm. This ain't this ain't this ain't that. You know what I'm saying? So. You what know, you what mean, the nigga just, hey. one thing I know, one let me nine, tell you one nine, thing I know, three, that's an unforgiving city, my nigga. Man. I'm glad you think it's a joke, but you know, Merry Christmas, homie. That's crazy. That's an unforgiving wild. city, homie. Nigga be lucky I, I, if you make it to Christmas, goddamn. Yo, I may I as well you. go ahead and promote. So what you saying is the racket ain't gonna fuck with him no more that's after that? That's crazy. I'm just saying he better watch what he doing, nigga, because... Yeah. If he telling me he got the number one show in Chicago and he allowing that to happen to Chicago, one of them little niggas who be part of that 75 hit over a weekend, they going to take that some kind of way home. Man, why do you keep speaking fun? Who the f*** are you? Well, he just got to learn how to take constructive criticism. Hey, I don't think yeah, he's taking constructive criticism. He, 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 he can't because he's too much of a nigga talking fun. Hey, so can I ask a question right quick? Yeah, go ahead, homie. So, so whack. You did an interview with Six Nine, and you said the streets don't dictate your business. So, what's different from you and that? You out of here, man. That nigga, hold on. Let me tell you what's different. If that nigga would have dis power rule, I'd have dismantled him nigga right. and broke his motherfucking face on East Side power rule. He'd have so, disrespected so, so, anything. So he didn't dis anything no power I stand rule. for. If that nigga would have told me, fuck your dead homies, 
Yo, say, nigga, I'm mangling the nigga. So he didn't diss no Pyro? Hell, when? 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 I thought Slim 400 was a Pyro. It ain't. Hey, listen, y'all take y'all not listening, blood. It ain't about who he diss or oh what he diss. It's about respect. Hold on, one mic. It ain't about who. Wait, one mic, gang. It's not about who he diss or what he diss. As a man, you don't let no nigga sit in your face and say them crazy ass things. Up he no ain't gonna on say. He talking about his face. Look, 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 a nigga can say whatever he want away from you, but in your face as a man, you not finna let no nigga do that if you say you a man. You telling me a nigga diss my city, my state? And, and, and what I stand for? All right, so you guys just heard the back and forth with uh, DJU and WAC 100. And I find this very interesting. I feel like WAC 100 was sending out a bunch of dog whistles, you know, to people in Chicago to confront this man, you know, to possibly, you know, bring harm to him without saying it in so many words. My thing is... Why even instigate this? Why even keep saying that these guys from Chicago, they don't play that, they're going to come see you? I don't think that anybody could have done anything to control Charleston White. Charleston White was going to do what he wanted to do. Um, but I don't agree with, like, the constant instigation. From the end of the day, he can't call shots for Chicago. He's from Cali. And let's not forget that he also ran with 6 9 who many times has showed up in LA. That's YG right there. What is it? What is it? Name one slip on it right there. Name one. I can't. No, you can't? You yeah, never man. heard of the guy. Never heard of him? What's oh, your message? Just like 400. Get some money. You broke. Like, yo, I, yo, bro, if, if YG really had love for you, you wouldn't be in LA right now. If YG was really your friend, you wouldn't be in hell right now. <coughs> YG can't even get himself out the hood. Look, he can't get himself out the hood. So you decided just to Who has disrespected many a dead rappers, but yet and still he had no problem managing him or, you know, being, you know, standing next to him. Even when people told him not to stand with 6 9 he said it was business. I'm glad that DJ you brought that up because so soon he has forgotten who he was rolling with that a lot of people weren't rocking with. Now, what's very interesting about this situation is that basically Charleston White, he received tons of backlash. They were dragging him on social media, on the shade room. A lot of people were really disgusted by his actions. And I was too. You know, I feel like this. Anytime you pull out a gun on somebody, um, that is taking it to a level that is insane. And from what I was always taught, if you pull out a gun on somebody, you better use it. Okay? That man pulling out that gun, he didn't know who was in that room. He didn't know the mentality of everybody in that room. They could have took that as an instant threat, and he could have lost his life right there and then. I find it very interesting that the same thing he's been preaching about which I do agree with some of the things that he has said over the past few weeks, over the past few months that I have been introduced to him. Um, he talks a lot about rappers disrespecting the dead. You know, rappers saying they're smoking on Tuka packs and all that disgusting stuff. Um, but it's very interesting now that he has now taken on that same persona the same persona, which is these rap personas that he's been condemning, he is now the living embodiment of the same thing that he spent months condemning. He's now going around dissing dead rappers. He's also dissing their mothers. And then he also goes on to pull out a gun and, you know, threaten people. Even if he didn't say, I'm going to kill you, when you pull out a gun on somebody that is their ultimate thought process. Like, I'm about to die. This man's about to take my life. And so, to me, he was acting in the same way that these rappers act, not only in the studio, but in real life. So that whole display was just extremely disturbing. And I think it made a lot of people look at him differently. But looking at that video, there are certain points where DJ, you would look into the camera and I know when me and my homeboy watched the video a few times, he was saying that he kind of felt like it might have been staged, like something about it didn't feel that authentic. Well, now that Charleston White has been receiving tons of backlash, 
Um, I don't know if there was going to be a criminal investigation. I don't know if the police were going to get involved. But now he's coming out and he's saying it was a joke. It was planned. He was in character. And maybe y'all can fill me in on this whole character thing because I don't follow him like that while I understand this. Um, He keeps saying at times he plays this character that Charleston White is not necessarily him. It's a character that he plays. Um, And then other times he's a comedian. The whole thing is very confusing to me. But like I said, this video of him pulling out this gun was very disturbing So now he's saying that he was in character and that possibly the DJ knew what was going to happen and that he did this for a viral moment. So I want you guys to watch these two clips from Charleston White talking about the situation. Go ahead and check this out. Boy, I done took over the internet. Boy, I done took... Say, them Chicago niggas came down here and scared me, man. Them little them young niggas came down here and scared me. So I didn't just pull no gun out on nobody, y'all. That's not true at all. That's not, but I did, I, they scared me. Just like when the police had to shoot a nigga and the police excuse here, I was in fear of my life. I was in fear of my life. Y'all don't know how many Chicago niggas was in the room. Y'all don't know how many Chicago niggas was outside. I was in fear of my life. I ain't point the gun at nobody, but I cocked it and pointed at the camera. <laughs> Yeah, now I cocked that motherfucking gun and told everybody, get out the way, nigga, and pointed it at the camera. <laughs> but that nigga, that nigga say, listen, the young nigga got some nuts. Now, I ain't going toward him with the gun, but he jump up on me. What you grab? But he trying, nigga, you trying to represent Chicago while I got a gun in my hand. Get out the way. Now, I point the gun at the camera. But they don't show that part. But the little nigga rep Chicago, let me just say this. The little nigga ain't no hoe. Little nigga ain't no hoe. Little nigga ain't no hoe. I point the gun at the camera because the gun that I was talking to Chicago, he jump in and butt in as I'm talking to Chicago. He trying to rep Chicago. Man, nigga, fuck Chicago. So you hear me say, man, fuck Chicago. Thank you. He trying to rep. I'm trying to get a point out. Nigga, I ain't worried about it. So I go, nigga, I keep a gun on me. Nigga, so I'm great. What you grabbing? You, nigga, sit down. Get out the way, nigga. Bow. I point the gun. But y'all got to watch the whole video. The whole video ain't that shit. So what I realize is, uh, we had a perfect interview. And it ended phenomenally. That's all I can say. When he released that whole motherfucking video, ooh, we, boy, I'm talking about everybody go, man, I'm talking about they may even play this in the college classrooms, in college universities. No, 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 that young nigga got a bad motherfucker. And the young nigga won my heart. Because this is what I realized about the young brother, DJU. He a little street Chicago kid that love Chicago. He lied to Chicago, even at a fault. And I'm saying, homie, at some point you got to be by business. You got to be by business, young brother. But if you go rep Chicago, nigga, let me share. This is what I got to say to you, nigga. Since you down here repping and all these niggas acting like they mad. I pointed the gun at the camera. I got it on camera. Now, it was heated. Oh, that nigga little partner with little yellow shirt went to run out. The shooter out, they had the shooter outside. Oh yeah, it got heated. But it's all love. It ain't it ain't no different than the family. The little nigga really tried to come take the gun out my hand. That's why I'm saying, nigga, don't approach me with no gun. I'm, I'm trying to tell nigga, get out the way. Nigga, when I take stage and I go in the road and I go with my character, sometimes I go overboard. But hey, nigga, I'm in the, I'm in road. I can't jump and roll and then jump out of roads. Hey, y'all, I'm, nah, nigga, once I go on the road, sometimes I done ended up in jail and roll. Didn't know when to exit stage. But nigga, guess what? The road was effective. And I got the job done. That's all I wanted to do. So all I'm telling y'all, leave the little nigga alone, homie, and watch the whole motherfucking interview. This nigga got a platform where he making money off of. You don't see Wack 100 crashing out from his platform. This nigga got a platform that's making money with damn near 100,000 subscribers. Y'all want him to crash out in Texas. So let me just say this. It was DJU, two young niggas with the camera, and they had a nigga out of Chicago we never seen. So 
Do bury them outside. Do bury them don't know what's going on. They just come in. Do bury already know me. He come in and pick up on the plate. Right? Do bury saying, man, they got a nigga outside, homie. I don't give a damn about that nigga. I'm playing. Nigga, take care of that. Look, homie tripping. Do bury, take care of the little nigga. Let me talk to the nigga with business. Cause I ain't got to explain nobody about the plays I'm running. This my stage. I tell y'all later, nigga. I tell y'all what I'm doing later, but when I'm doing it, I ain't tell because if I tell y'all, it's gonna be staged. And I don't stage nothing. I just do it and then I come back and say what I did because I got an explanation on why I did something. I don't have an excuse. I have an explanation on why I do things. I'm a thinking motherfucker and I'm running plays every time the camera. Nigga, man, he don't buzz, nigga. The cameraman and DJ, you looking at each other, wink. Nigga, this for the camera, nigga. I'm trying to tell y'all to get out the way, nigga. God, let me put, put on for the show. You see, I done ran to the camera looking in the camera. I'm saying Chicago. Be careful, Charles. Get your bitch ass out there. Suck my motherfucking dick. I don't give a fuck about being careful. You a coward, not me. So, peep game. So, nigga, so everybody laughing. So, I'm saying, so now... I got to sit back and see, okay, this was a risky move, nigga. Ooh, this was a risky move. Because the young nigga, if he ain't a game-related young nigga, he can spin this, and then it look bad for the culture, nigga, because y'all had a great interview, nigga. You might have fucked up and killed the great interview. Now it's all on the young nigga. Because I don't already got paid. We got the footage too, right? So... The young nigga hit the road. Boy, when I wake up the next morning and I see what the young nigga posted, I said, bingo. I said, man, that young nigga is sharp because what he did, Hollywood movie producers does this. He took the ending of the movie and made it the beginning. And fucked everybody minds. Ooh, we. So, Whack 100, no, this is a marketing genius. And he's mad. He's mad. So, now he's saying, unless you were doing that for clout, all of us with a YouTube platform, a clubhouse room, studio, a inst it's all for clout because the clout brings money. Nigga, ain't, ain't nobody trying to die and kill over this social media shit. That's why all the street niggas run into social media talking. Talking gangster. Because they ain't want to die in the streets. So how y'all going to ask a nigga to elevate to this platform where he can pay somebody $15,000? This man got a business where he can pay $15,000. Book flights. Not only do he have a business, he have employees. He got a nigga working the camera. He got another nigga working the camera. And he got a shooter outside. The nigga had a shooter we never seen. I don't know who that nigga in the car was. So when Dewberry handling the little homie that's mad, calming him down, letting him know, nah, homie ain't like that. We ain't them kind of nigga. Little homie said, man, he, but little homie doing what he know to do. He don't know this is a play. He behind the camera. He ain't in front of it. So Dewberry get him out the room because he's the he's the upset one. None of us else is upset. Get him out the room. Dewberry take him outside. Dewberry come back in and says, say, homie, they got a nigga outside. Now Dewberry coming in and said, nah, homie, it's a nigga outside. They got a nigga. We don't even draw. I say, I know it's a nigga out there. Nigga, it's a place. Nigga, this is what's happening. So everybody said, ah. So the nigga, the young nigga, homie, the young nigga is so sharp, homie. See, now he got the light. Now whoever hot in Chicago, if he pointed them, they hot to us. So peep game, right? So when I let everybody know this play I just ran, I'm saying, homie, that interview was too positive. For him to take that back to Chicago and get his money's worth. He come repping Chicago. He got a whole list of book of questions. 
That nigga saying, Mama Duck says you don't say this. Man, I'm saying, man, I don't, man, I'm so, I'm showing. No, that nigga came with questions. He made me pull out cash out receipts. That nigga had, no. So I'm saying, no, man, uh, I, I, I know what I'm doing. And, and this, and this is what I told all my people. I said, man, that young nigga deserved that shit. I'm not going to tell y'all why I did it. Until I get in front of that kid and tell him, he know why, but he don't know the why. All right, so you guys just watch those clips. To me, if this was a joke, if this was if this was a quote unquote joke, if this was just meant to get a viral moment and be posted all over the internet, I find that extremely disturbing. I find it extremely disturbing that this is what we have to do as a black collective on social media to get clicks and views that we've gotten to the point where we are so low vibrational that we have to start pulling out guns in the middle of interviews and start threatening people and, and, you know, saying F dead rappers and F their moms. This is sad that this is where it's at with this whole interview genre in the black space of YouTube. I just find this sad. You know, if all of this was planned and he was playing a character, I don't find it funny at all. Because to me, in that moment, you are acting no different than the same rappers that you condemn. So I'm just really disappointed in this because he's saying that the interview was positive. There was a lot of gems being dropped. Why couldn't it have been about that? Why do we need the theatrics? Why do we need to once again perpetuate gun culture, you know what I'm saying, perpetuate violence, perpetuate a lack of respect, you know, for all the black men who were in that room. So I'm just, I don't know, like the, the whole situation was just really disheartening to watch. And if DJ U was a part of this and he knew this was going to happen, I'm disappointed in that. You know, it's almost like you're just selling your soul for views. If your content is good, the money's going to come. If people like what you do, you're going to build a fan base. You're going to have a following. People are going to support you. You shouldn't have to depend on theatrics and things like that to get views and to go viral. Because, yeah, you might be viral at the moment, but once the truth starts to come out and people feel like they were played, guess what? It can backfire to where people will not fool with you anymore, where people are like, okay, well, all of this is scripted for drama. I'm checking out. You know, you rather build a solid fan base of real genuine people based off of who you really are and your true beliefs and your core values than to do things for shock value and for a viral moment. Because, yeah, that will garner you attention, but only for the time being. Will you be here in four, five, six, seven, eight, nine years? Only time can tell. So on that note, you guys, go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think about this entire situation concerning Charleston White, DJU, WAC 100, um, and just everything that went on with this viral story. Um, I just find the whole thing just really disturbing. But I'll leave the question to you all. Let me know your thoughts on this situation. Do you feel like people now are going too far looking for a viral moment? And then how do you feel with what Charleston White is now trying to backtrack and say that this was planned out and, you know, it wasn't what we thought it was? So let me know y'all's thoughts. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit the like button. And once again, thank you so much for tuning in. I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. You want the latest news in the streets? Join us, sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So, sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely tea TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely tea TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.